this is a video on my favourite books. This is a timeless content right here. Thanks to Alina Rubin for suggesting this on Instagram. Uh, who doesn't want to just talk about their favourite books? Of course I'm down to do that. I have five books to show you and gosh it is hard to pick favourite books because I feel like there are there are maybe a dozen books that I say it's one of my favourite books but I think these ones are ones I have described as my favourite book, like the individual one. Although they're quite, you know, things change over time but I think these are all books I've described as my favourite book and also I would count amongst my favourite books, if that makes sense. We're going to start with maybe my favourites from the favourites, the one that I probably call my favourite the most of the time. Probably now if you said what's your favourite book, I would say this is my favourite book, and that is The Secret History by Donna Tartt. This came out in 1992 and it follows a boy called Richard Papin as he goes to a liberal arts college in New Hampshire and joins an eccentric group of Greek students. Um, but like, as is described on the first page, um, one of this Greek group uh, gets murdered by the other five <laughs> um, and the first half is like leading up to that murder and the second half is them dealing with the repercussions of the murder. I love this book, I love how earnestly highbrow and pretentious it is but I also love how matured the characters are, like they really feel like Oh, you can you can so imagine this world. It's like very easy to picture, even if it's not very heavily described. Um, and it's just a very kind of intoxicating environment. I love the idea of this like isolated, exclusive group that we we get to peer into through the lens of this person that's been been like reluctantly accepted into their ranks. Um, and the whole like murder mystery. I mean, it's not a mystery. Um, and also, as you can tell from the title like they don't get caught for the murder um but there's still so much intrigue in it and i love this this copy is like pretty battered now um they have a 25th anniversary edition which is like thick white cover with like the secret history and just crossed over it's, it's cool. i'll put a picture of it here it's so beautiful so next time i read it i want to get that copy because i think this is probably coming to the end of its days i did a video about this book when i first read it in 2014 i was just as ecstatic about it back then uh, i will leave a link to that in the description the second book i have to talk about is the virgin suicides by jeffrey eugenides this was published in 1993 and this is my weird copy where I made a cover, I've done like several videos about this book, I made a cover of the book because I lost my original copy which was this, that was the cover for it um, and then when I bought this new one I was like this doesn't feel like my copy, it's quite nice but it's just not like, it's different you know. The Virgin Suicides follows the five Lisbon sisters, um, they are from the ages of 13 to 18, is that 13, 14, 15, 16? 13 to 17 um, and they basically all kill themselves. I mean that's said in the first page of the book um, and it's told from the perspective as these like of these voyeuristic boys, their contemporaries at school um, but from the perspective of like 20 years later and then remembering these girls and trying to decipher them and like just trying to understand why they did what they did and how they were feeling and what they were thinking. The girls in this are so ethereal and so intangible and yet it kind of like bleeds emotion like you can every every description in the book is just extremely evocative writing especially I've, I've talked about this and I did a video where I read it, read it and re reviewed it two years ago on this channel, I'll link that below, that's probably more watchable than the Secret History one, um, but the, his descriptions of decay, especially the way this household is falling apart as these girls fall apart and like descent into a, you know, a space they won't be able to come back from mentally, um, and I just, I, I, I can't even, I just love it, I love it! Now this third book I don't love, I don't even like it, I hate it. This is A Little Life by Hanya Yanagihara, um, I, it came out in 2015, I read it last year and it was in one of my mega book review things, I will think that obviously, um, and oh it just hurt me so much. This was a book that killed, that it really just takes your heart and squeezes it, rumples it up. Um, so hard to read but like just so incredible, like I hate it, I hate it, I hated this book. I like don't want to read it again but I really do want to read it. So it follows these four men, uh, Jude, Willem, JB and Malcolm um, from where they 
they know each other from like college and the book starts when they're about 25. Um, it's all based in New York and until they're like 60, so it's like a, a large chunk of their lives and how they their lives interweave and stuff. Um, it especially follows Jude, who's had a really awful and abusive upbringing um, and hasn't come to terms with it by the age of 25 and hasn't really come to terms with it by the age of you know 50 um, and you get you kind of like slowly throughout this narrative and throughout these years the, the book reveals more to you in the form of flashbacks but also he reveals more to his friends and like opens up but just like it never feels like he opens up quite enough um, and I mean this is an enormous book it's 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 over 700 pages long but like I don't I've spoken to three or four people that have read this and they've just all been like that was amazing that was amazing I don't think I've spoken to a single person that didn't think this book was incredible everybody says it's incredible but nobody like enjoyed the process of reading it it takes over your entire life because you are so sucked in to the narrative it is so truly absorbing and you feel so much pain for the characters i don't think i can describe it any better than saying that i absolutely hated it because it hurt next book i have to talk about is less than zero by bretty sinellis i was hesitant to put this in because i haven't read this since i first read it i read it once and i was 15 or 16 i think i read it before i read the virgin suicides which i read around that time um but I just immediately loved it then and I don't know if I would now you know I think I was really drawn to well firstly the idea of loving him so this book follows a boy called Clay uh, he's 18 years old he lives in LA but he goes to university he, like leaves LA to go to college elsewhere to get out of this LA lifestyle and this is him coming back for the Christmas holidays and like realizing that he's still so part like he can't really escape from it and it's very debaucherous there's lots of drugs there's lots of partying there's lots of nihilistic hedonistic young people just like fucking each other i think when i read this i loved how self-destructive it was i loved how it you could feel it going wrong throughout the book you could feel it getting worse and worse um and that just really endeared me to it like i just wanted that I, I think i was in like a bit of a dodgy mental space myself um and just like was so drawn to like the darkness of it i've read a bunch of ray sass books um f like again when i was a bit younger pro actually maybe entirely before i got into reading any other kind of book and i think the later ones i read I was able to kind of appreciate that it was a different part of my brain that was enjoying them. It was like, it was that self-destructive, that horror, that nihilistic, that hedonistic part of me that, that enjoyed them. And I think that's shrinking over time. Like I don't want to go out and do loads of drugs anymore. Like I'm really kind of over that. I want mature consensual relationships and not like the clusterfuck of this. Also, Brett Easton Ellis is like a huge twat. Like he's just a dickhead. Like I feel like the more time that passes, the worse he gets. I think my experience of this book when I was young was so pure that I don't I don't want to ruin it for myself. I don't want this to not be one of my favorite books because it really, it really encapsulated what I wanted to read at the time. And I think that's okay. So I don't need to read it. Like I don't feel the desire to read it again. Uh, maybe if I go through like a really terrible breakup or something, um, but, but uh, I'm kind of like okay to to leave this in my reading history as something that was really poignant for me at the time. And hey, if you're feeling self-destructive, this is the book for you. The last book I have to show to you out of my all-time favorites is Harry Potter, The Prisoner of Azkaban. I couldn't not, I couldn't not. I know it's cliche, everyone loves Harry Potter. I don't care that everyone loves Harry Potter because I love Harry Potter and that doesn't have to be, it's not a fucking competition. It's just something I really love. I re-listen to the audiobooks, the Stephen Fry audiobooks, at least twice a year. So I am like quite, still quite an intense Harry Potter nerd. Um, and Prison of Az Azkaban for me is just like the perfect point at which it it it, it becomes like intense and uh, you know, Harry and his friends start having like stronger bonds because they've grown up more, but still being like really childlike and mystical and wondrous. And I, yeah, I love it. I love it so much. I like the time travel, even though time travel is a terrible device and let's like not use it in any 
any fiction ever. Um, but I just, I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. Who doesn't love it? Who doesn't love Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban? That's it, I don't even need to justify myself. This has been a really wonderful video to film. Let me know your favorite ever books in the comments and um, let me know if how you feel about any of my ones, especially Brady Snell's. No, actually, wait, no, let's, let's stop participating in him. He's in the past. No more Brady Snell's. I'm gonna stop recording now. Have a lovely day.